Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about how to do the design under the bezel in this area to be accurate. Are you ready? Let's get started. So that's coming into the front view and we want to draw a circle, use a command circle. Type it zero and I want to set it up a diameter for 16 millimeter and this will be our ring size. And then I'm going to come into the top to draw a cabochon stone. So basically I'm going to snapping into the zero again and depends on how big your cabochon is going to be. We're going to use the command sphere and we pretty much just going to 1D scale on this sphere. For the cabochon stone, the back is always flat, so let's go ahead to draw a box and cut it somewhere about here. And we simply just want to use the boolean difference command and difference this sphere out of this box. So then we have this sphere here. As our cabochon stone. All right, so let's go ahead and make a seat first. I'm gonna come in into here and pretty much just draw a box starting from the midpoint coming over here. It's a little bit depth about this size. And I simply just going to draw another box starting uh, from here and going up. You don't have to have a, this one too tall as long as you have a room to fall over to set the stone, that will be fine. And let's go ahead to trim each other by trimming the one in the middle and let's go ahead to join them. We may not need this one right here so let's explode it everybody and we just want to delete that one. Let's go ahead join one by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six and all of them uh, join it together into one curve. Now if you are going just doing for the render uh, purpose that you may want to lower down this and moving in adjust a little bit even though you are cutting into the stone the render won't see but what we would like to do is giving a nice fillet so let's go ahead to use the fillet command for fillet curve that's starting fillet for maybe 0.6 for the radius snapping here and here on the other side I want to have something a little bit smaller 0.2 and go from here to here. All right, so now we have this. Let's go ahead to making a bezel. And we want this coming into the center on the top view. So let's go ahead to the front view and we're gonna use the command for projected to C plane. And then we'll delete the input right there. And then so we'll have this one. We'll have this curve right in the center. So making into the bezel as a surface, we are coming to the surface and using the command for revolve and snapping into the endpoint and axis, you simply just holding the shift key and click on anywhere on the top. Coming back to the top view, we want to make sure it's 360 degree and then we'll get the bezel like this. And now we want to design the under bezel area. So that's coming over to creating a surface first. So we want to come in here using the curve command and we want to come in down something like this and going inside. And this will be the curve. This will be the curve for me to creating the surface. We're going to use the same command revolve and snapping into the zero on my top view, holding the shift key and snapping anywhere on the, that green axis and coming into the top, we wanna make sure it's 360 degree. So this is will be there just for the reference. Uh, we need to see what is the area to creating the design. Before we do that, we probably want to finish the ring shank. So let's go ahead to draw the arc using the arc command snapping into the zero coming over here as long as you are over 1.5 millimeter 
and coming back like this. I always like to have the button this taper, so I'm going to move the control point on the button, and then we'll have something taper like that. Then I'm going to use the line going straight holding the shift. The first one or two, you might want to make sure that it is going straight. So that will look really nice blend there. And I wanted this coming up like this. And then you can always adjust. I feel like this is a little bit kinky there. So I'm going to have this one coming down just a little bit. This one coming out a little bit to get something like this. So once you have that, then we can do our sweep. I only need to create half of a ring shank. So I'm going to do is split this curve in half. So that's using the split command and make sure on the top you have to click on the point. We want to split on the quadrant and the quadrant. So we'll have this into two. We want to split this one on the bottom as well. So that's using the split command again, using the point split on the quadrant as well. So we don't need this half there. Let's go ahead to creating the cross section. So on the bottom, I would like to have the cross section. We want to use the command for rectangle corner. And if you right click will be the conic corners. And we want to use the three points. So that's snapping into the point one, point two on the perspective and move it back to the right view and kind of moving your mouse in a little bit. So now you will have this profile there. Let's go ahead to move this profile back to this endpoint. Now we don't need to have this one go all the way inside. So that's using a split command one more time. And we want to split with the point and coming over here. So now we have this one that we can did it. So to be easy to see, let's join this first. And I want to turn them into the red color. So it's easier for you to see. Now let's do a test. If we are going to do the sweep to rail, you got rail one. You got rail two, you got this cross section and we'll pretty much get the ring shank like this. I don't really like this bumpy. I actually wanted to go from really wide and getting really narrow on the top. So what I like to do is using the commands called duplicate edges. You can type it D-U-P-E, then it will show in the command bar. And you can simply just duplicate these edges, make sure you join them. So then we will have that curve over there. Let me marking into the red color as well. All right. So for this one, I would like to get them thinner. So we're going to get them into something like this. Once you set up everything, let's do sweep to rail one more time. The command sweep to rail, we're going to do rail one, rail two, cross section one and cross section two and make sure that they are aligned. I always like to align them into the inside of the ring and make sure they are facing the same direction. Okay. When you click OK, you're going to see something like this. It still have a little bit bumpy there. So I want to click on the maintain high so it won't change the thickness space on the distance in between those two curves. So I will get something like this. If you like the result, just go ahead to click OK and then you will have something like this. Since we only do the half, all we need to do is mirror to the other side. So using the command mirror and we want to snapping into the endpoint, holding your shift key and join them. So then you will have the ring shank ready. Okay. Now, since I already cut the circle for my ring that I set it up for 16 millimeter, I'm just going to do it one more time. So I have a circle there. What I'm going to do is using the circle to trim this reference uh, surface. So then we have this area to do our design. Okay. Now everything set it up. I'm going to show you two way. The first way, if you go ahead to create UV curve, you're going to see this is what happened. Uh, you see an overall surface and then you also see this line right there. If you use the command shrink trim surface first, 
and they feel like this is nothing happened. But if you create a UV curve command one more time, you're going to see something like this. All right, so let me explain to you what's the differences. The differences of this guy and this guy is the first one on my top view. This one right here is actually preserved the history for before it get trimmed, before the surface get trimmed. That's why you got those distance there. This one, since we use the command shrink trim surface, so the surface will go in very close to whatever that is, um, to the edge. So I always like to use a shrink trim surface first and to be more accurate. All right, so let's do our design. I'm going to delete this one. And I simply want to draw some triangle, but to be super accurate, I'm going to explode it, this one. And I want to pick up this curve and use the command divide. And I simply just going to divide it into 10 sections there. All right. So if I have a triangle going in between, I can connect it, those lines. So I'm going to make a copy using the copy command, selecting all the points that I have and uh, copy to the other side. So simply what I like to do, it's going up and down to having my triangle design like this. Okay, so once I have it, I'm going to use that to creating a thickness there. So I'm going to use the commands called offset and I want to offset them into 0.4 millimeter and make sure I want them to be on both sides. Maybe 0.4 is a little bit too weak. Maybe we want it to 0.6 to be more solid. And I will want it to have it on both sides for 0.6 millimeter. So we no longer need this one. Let me just delete this. And this is the area that we need. All right, so this is the design that we have. Let me explode it, this one. We also need the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead to use the command for offset curve again, moving down about 0.8 millimeter. This one moving, not moving, copy a line up for 0.8 millimeter as well. So we need those triangle design there. Let's go ahead to using this one and this one. And we want to trim the area whatever outside of this two curves. So let's go ahead to trim this. So we have the middle design left. We want to trim everything on the bottom as well. Whatever past that line. There. Okay. We also need to trim those extra line and to keep those uh, triangle in there. So I'm going to trim it off those and those. You have to kind of thinking into the reverse way to handle this. All right, so once you are done, just go ahead to unselect this one and everybody else should be joined together. And unselect this one. The one on the edge, we want to deselect them and we want to join the rest of them. All right, so those are the design we are going to flow it back. So let me go ahead to mark it into the red color. All right. So to flow it back to the surface, we need to creating a surface as a reference surface first. So that's using the command for rectangular plane. And we want snapping from this point to this point. All right. And then we're going to come in over here, finding where is the seam. As you can see, there's a darker line there. So that means that's the edge. Let's go ahead to pick up all those red color there, not the point on the top.
And so we have those curve. We want to flow along surface. That's the command we're going to use. And we're going to come in. Let me make sure it is in the ghost view. So we're going to make sure we pick up one of the corner and coming over here to pick up the target for the other side of the corner. And then you can see it is coming really well to this surface. So now they're coming into the surface we can trim. And sometimes when they uh, move into the top, not necessarily they will be exactly accurate to the surface, but we can give it a try. We're going to use a trim command. And if I pick up this one, am I able to trim this one? Yes, I can. If you are not uh, like what I have here, you have a hard time to trim it. You can just pull them back to the surface and that should do the trick. So that's using the trim command. I'm going to trimming all this triangle surface out by doing so. All right. So now we have this only on a surface, right? So we need to creating the thickness. Let's go ahead to use the command for offset. Now offset has the offset curve and offset surface. Make sure you use the command for offset surface and we want to offset inside. So let's say I want to offset inside for one millimeter and I want to solid it equal yes and make sure that all the arrow is pointed inside. And then I will create those thickness there. Now I'm looking at this and realize my uh, ring shank, it doesn't meet into the top. And that doesn't look good because I feel like something is broken there. So what I like to do is actually changing that profile. And I want to redo the ring shank. I'm going to delete the ring shank right here. And I'm going to pick up the profile and use 1D scale. So you come in here for the command, 1D scale. You want to snap in into this point and pull it out whatever inside of that shape. All right, so that way will guarantee, I think it's pulling out way too much. Um, so let me do it one more time. 1D scale coming here. And we actually want to come in into the side view. And because of the angle, that's why it is coming out there. So I'm going to, have it just a little bit longer and I want to use the rotate tool to rotate it going inside of it, right? So that way it will um, work better. It will have enough length. It doesn't feel like it's broken over there. And I'm going to moving this point to the quadrant there. All right, so let's give it a try and see if the ring shank work better. Let's use the command for sweep to rail. You got rail one, rail two, and you got this cross section and also this cross section as well. Make sure that they all line up to inside of the ring. And I'm going to move it this one to here and then facing the same direction. Make sure maintain height is checked. And I also wanted to record history because it looked a little bit too thin there. Let's click OK. Now, if this look too thin to you, you can, because we recorded history, so we can kind of play with the real time to make it thicker. All right. So if that look all right, let's go ahead to have this one to mirror to the other side by using the mirror command and join them together. Right. It will say you break the history. That's okay. We no longer need to change it. And we can use the command cap, C-A-P, to make it into solid. Let's take a look on the render view. All right, that's how you uh, transfer design from a flat surface into this curved surface there. If you like the way I model, I have a lot more video on the membership program. Consider joining the membership that is supporting as a small YouTuber like me to keep making the video. Or click the thanks button on the right button of the video. A small donation, it can help me in the long way. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.